Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Kelvin here. The main reason we all invest is to what big big. But unfortunately, many of us are noobs when it comes to investing. Rather than buy low, sell high, we often end up buying high, selling low. But here's the good news. It has been found that animals are good at investing. A cat was able to outperform professionals. Rats can be trained to beat farm managers. Blindfolded monkeys beat humans at stock picking. And recently, a goldfish was able to beat Wall Street bats and outperform the Nasdaq. So if you have either cat, rat, monkey or goldfish in your house, better start letting them invest instead. All those aside, rather than rely on animals to help us invest, what I'm more interested to find out is, can you really outperform the market by following real pro investors? I'm talking about people like Michael Burry, Jim Cramer, financial analysts, fund managers, and even Nancy Pelosi, who's better known as the queen of investing. For this video, I want to give all the credits to Not Joss, who has done all the hard work analyzing tons of data and summarizing it into very easy to understand articles. I will link all of his stuff down below for you to check out. As usual, before I start, I would greatly appreciate it if you can help to tap the like button. In return, I will show you a cute seal. Alright, let's start right now. Okay, the first candidate is US Congress. There were over 9,000 trades made by Congress members in the past two years. But she only focused on the buy trade, which were larger than $15,000, so as not to affect the analysis. By the way, if you are interested to follow Congress trades, you can check out House Stock Watcher, where you will see all the public trades done by them. For example, you can see that Nancy Pelosi bought more Tesla stocks on March 17. She's definitely one of us. Anyway, it was found that Congress members managed to outperform the S&P 500. And the longer period it is, the more they will outperform. So does it mean that we can follow all the trades and what big big? Well, yes, but no. While all the trades are available, they don't have to report the trades immediately because, you know, they are busy doing politics. The stock app only requires them to report the transaction within 30 days, but the median delay is 28 days, while the average delay is 52 days. Then what if we follow the trace after it is made public? Okay, check this out. If you follow the trace after the delay, in one month, you might underperform the S&P 500 by a little, but over the long term, you will still outperform the S&P 500. As you can see, following US Congress trades actually lets you outperform the market. But here are some fine prints. First, he only used two years worth of data, which is definitely not enough to see the whole picture, especially when during that two years, there was a super big bull run. The results might be very different in a bear market or recession. Second, the data are combined. Different Congress members who have different performance, like Mark Green had 36% average returns, while Michael T. McCow only had 12% average return. So if you want to outperform the market by following them, you will need to follow every single one of their trades, or try to pick one and pray pray that he or she will give you the best returns. Next, what about institutional investors like hedge funds? Can they outperform the market? After all, their goal is to shop meme stocks into the ground or die trying. Just kidding, their goal is to help rich investors invest their money. By rich, I don't mean your $5 can buy Thai fun with fish kind of rich. It's a bit more. If you want to invest through hedge funds, you will need anywhere from 100 k to $1 million to participate. Fun fact, institutional investors own about 80% of market capitalization, which is about $100 trillion in 2020 which means they have the money to move markets. So theoretically, if you follow their trades, you will be able to outperform the market. Okay, before I continue, I want to show you something. If you open up the Momo app, go to quotes, markets, scroll down a bit, you will see institutional tracking. Here, you will see some familiar names like Warren Buffett Cocos, Berkshire Hathaway, and Katy Mama's Art in West. Let's say if I go into Berkshire Hathaway, I can see their recent purchase and portfolio, like they own a super high 46% of Apple in their portfolio. So is following their trades or portfolio a good idea? Let's find out. Not just use the data from Barclay Hedge Fund Index, where it tracks the return of over 5,000 hedge funds since 1997. And he found that S&P 500 managed to beat hedge funds 
from both periods. In another report, it was found that 79% of fund managers underperformed the S&P 500 in 2021. Not only that, the average fund managers have been underperforming the markets for 12 consecutive years. Meanwhile, they are charging an average 1.36% management fee and 18% performance fee, which is super duper expensive. So, does this mean that hedge funds are as useless as a char seal despite their high fees? Eh, not really. That's because people who invest through hedge funds are rich people. For them, the purpose of investing is not so much about quite big big or go to the moon because they are already rich. The purpose is more about diversification and reducing risk. Or in other words, earn money while trying not to lose money. Here, you can clearly see that S&P 500 outperforms hedge funds. But if you look at years where there are market crashes, hedge funds usually outperform the market. Like from 2000 to 2002 and in 2008. Hence the name hedge funds because they are hedging really well. Overall, following institutional investors will let you outperform the market. But I won't dismiss them yet because it's still useful to follow their stock picks and find out what they like about certain stocks. After all, they are the ones moving the stock market. Moving on, Michael Burry, just in case you don't know who is that, he's the famous investor who correctly predicted the 2008 market crash, then got featured in a movie, The Big Shot. And that's something I found very interesting. Besides warning us about market crashes, he likes to delete and reopen his Twitter account. After warning about market bubbles for months, he suddenly deleted his Twitter account, reactivated his account, tweets about the greatest speculative bubble of all time in all things, all hype speculation is drawing in retail before the mother of all crashes, then deletes his account again. Then in September, reactivated Twitter to warn about passive investing, ask about shorting crypto, then deletes his account again. Anyway, Knobdoss analyzed what Michael Burry said in the last 15 years to see how many times he turned out to be right. After the 2008 financial crisis, his first prediction is in May 2017, where he expected a global financial meltdown and World War III. World War III certainly didn't happen, and the market continued going up another 70% over 5 years till now. September 2019, index fund is the next market bubble. Nope, still up almost 40%. December 20, Tesla price is ridiculous, still up by 20% even though Tesla has dropped from its peak. Market is dancing on a knife's edge. Oops, market is still up by 6%. Bitcoin is a speculative bubble. Oh, he's finally right now. Bitcoin fell around 37% since he said that. June 2021, greatest speculative bubble of all time. He's right, market is down by 2%. So as you can see, most of the time, Michael Burry is wrong. Yes, he did make some right predictions. But here's the thing. If you keep saying that the market will crash over and over again, eventually, you will be right. And that's why in one tweet, Elon Musk called Burry a broken clock. And right after that, Michael Burry deleted his account again. Next, let's check out Jim Cramer. Just in case you don't know who he is, he's the host for Mad Money, where he talks about the market and gives stock recommendations from time to time. Prior to this, he graduated from Harvard, worked as a stockbroker at Goldman Sachs, started a hedge fund, and frequently appears on CNBC to give market commentary. In short, Jim Cramer definitely has a ton of experience in investing. So, Knob Jobs went to analyze Jim Cramer's stock recommendations over the past 5 years. Specifically, a total of 21,609 recommendations in 5 years, which is a lot, yeah? The stock picks are classified into buy, hold, sell, positive, or negative mention. Here's the result. Over a one-day period, Jim Cramer recommendations beat the market. For example, the stocks where he said to buy or had positive mention really did went up, while the stocks that had negative mention or sell really went down. But if you look at the slightly longer term, his sell recommendations were not so accurate. In fact, the stocks they asked to sell actually gave higher returns than the stocks that he asked to buy. That's where the meme always invers Kramer comes from because the opposite of what he says usually comes true. In terms of accuracy, Jim Cramer was right about 50% of the time. So if you listen to his recommendations, you will either make money or you will not. 50-50 chance. 
If you compare his performance versus the S&P 500, in the short term, you'll be outperforming the market. But over a longer time frame, you will underperform. What can we learn from here? First, Jim Cramer is quite accurate in the short term, but not over the long term. So it will only make sense to follow his advice if you are a day trader. Second, there's something called Cramer Effect. Whenever he talks about a stock on his show, there are thousands of people following his advice. Basically, oops, to get too strong. This can cause the stock to either pump up or sell down in the short term, which might explain why his recommendations do well in the short term. Okay, maybe Jim Cramer is not so accurate, but what about real financial analysts? According to Bloomberg, Goldman Sachs charges 30k for the research, JP Morgan 10k per report, and Barclays charges up to 455k for their research. So it's super important that they are able to deliver results, right? Because it's the only one job. Not just when they analyze all the 66k recommendations made over the last 10 years. And here's what he found. For buy recommendations, analysts were able to outperform the S&P 500 in one week, one month, and one quarter periods. But one thing you will notice is that the outperformance is actually quite tiny. Like for the one quarter, they only outperformed by 0.9%. For sell recommendations, over one week, they managed to outperform the market. But for one month and one quarter, they actually underperformed. Another interesting thing is, after telling people to sell, the stock did the exact opposite and went up instead. So financial analysts are not that accurate when it comes to sell. Out of all the analysts, Barclays gave the best return in all three periods. Overall, you will be able to beat the market if you follow their recommendations but you will only outperform by a bit a bit. And if you factor in fees, you will need to invest as much as $19 million just to break even. So it's definitely not doable for most people. Okay, as you can see, there are not much good choice to follow. Congress members may or may not outperform the market. Institutional investors certainly can't outperform the market. Michael Burry is usually wrong. Jim Cramer is 50-50. And even though financial analysts can outperform the market, Normal people like you and I definitely can't afford to buy their research. So how? Okay, here are two honorable mentions. First, Knobjobs found that if you invest in the top 10 companies of the S&P 500, like Microsoft, Google, Apple, you can actually outperform the market. This is probably because top companies have better reputation. That's why they tend to do well. However, he also admits that the data is actually quite limited as he only backtested over the last 10 years. Ideally, it should be over a longer period. Next, Knobjobs found that if you invest in the top 100 companies featured in the Fortune magazine, you will also outperform the market. The idea is that companies that have great culture will have happier employees, which in turn will deliver the best result and attract talents. But again, the data is quite limited, as it only looks at companies from 2012. So, that's a lot of comparisons done by Knobjobs. Some will let you outperform the market, while others do not. But if you just want a slow and steady from BP approach to investing, the best way is still to invest in the S&P 500, where you will get the exact same returns as the market. And best of all, it's recommended by Warren Buffett Coco. Anyway, that's all for today. What other methods will let you outperform the market? Let me know down below. Like, share, and subscribe as I'll be posting new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday.